So in the last video, I did kind of a speed run to see how quickly I could conquer Chang'an. Conquering Chang'an is a pretty big deal as if you capture Chang'an, you then control Emperor Xi'an. Controlling Emperor Xi'an means that the Han Empire becomes our vassal, which means they start paying us per turn, and we can make them declare war against our enemies. First though, we got Lu Bu to join our faction by convincing Dong Zuo to marry him off. We gave him territory and told him that we'd pay him a pretty large sum per turn for 10 turns. And to even sweeten the deal, Dong Zuo threw in a fat lump sum of 3500 We kept the 3500 and Lu Bu, but Dong Zuo never saw a penny of that 15 k as next turn we declared war against him, which effectively broke the 1500 per turn tree. This action was not without consequence though, as it made us treacherous, and Wang Wang shortly after declared war against us, as well as Yuan Shao. After five Fighting a very uphill battle, I thought the run was completely over when Lu Bu got cornered. As I'm playing on legendary difficulty, there's only one save and it's an auto save. So if you get into a really bad situation and you can't get out of it, it's pretty much run over. We somehow managed to win a battle where we were outnumbered 2 to 1 and we finally made it to Chang'an which was relatively undefended because they used most of their garrison to try to attack us earlier. If we put our main army all the way over here, or even possibly like on the other side of the city, they should put a lot of their reinforcements up here and their trebuchet if they have, yeah they have trebuchets. They're putting both their trebuchets over here, but that means that I'm pretty sure they don't have any trebuchets on the other side. And a lot of their units I think are actually kind of stuck here. So we're just going to move our main army along the edge of the battlefield all the way back to where our reinforcements came from. Also I don't know why, but the infantry in Yang Hong's army have this unique ability where they can do shield wall. It gives 900% charge resist and 35% range block chance. They put their shields up like this and it has a bunch of range toughness. They have an 80% chance to block range attacks with this on. The plan now is we're going to move these shield walled infantry up and we're going to have them tank some of this tower fire. While Zhang Liao's archers start fire arrowing these towers. Mainly we're going to start with this fort tower. I think it's the strongest one out of all their towers. It's going down pretty quick though. It's at 98 and it's at 100. Okay we'll back off. This fort tower is taking quite some time to burn out, but it is going down slowly but surely. Alright, now we're just going to rinse and repeat on this tower, except for this time we're just going to send in our bowmen. And we're going to use stone bulwark, and that should be enough just to be able to block them for long enough so that we can just burn this arrow tower real quick. Yeah, it's already burning out after like two volleys of arrows. Fire arrows are just no joke, man, I'm telling you. Alright, so we took out that tower, and they do have one all the way over here in the corner. So we're just going to move our units to this side, as this corner one was already destroyed when we started the attack. We'll move the shield walled infantry up and they can just start tanking some arrows. And we'll have these G militia push the battering ram in from the side. Pop range block and this gatehouse is not gonna last long against this battering ram. One hit did 42% of the damage. 83. And the gates have been breached. Their infantry are trying to hold this capture point but they're just getting bombarded. One of our generals has fallen. One of our generals has fallen. Oh no. I might have to do this battle over again. I wasn't paying attention and the general actually got killed. Okay, wait, we're just going to redo that. And we will sack and withdraw from Chang'an. That's going to give us 6.7k. And then with our other army, the same turn, we can occupy it. We do have to repair all of their buildings, which is going to be pretty expensive. All in all, that costed nearly 3.2k. And sacking the city reduced their population by a lot. I think they were at like nearly 700k before. Now they're only at 100k. Either way though, we did want to reduce the city level to a regular city, not a large city, because a large city costs 10 food production per turn, and a regular city only costs 6. I don't even know if we can support a regular city, and I don't know if I went over the legitimacy mechanic too much, but each turn we gain legitimacy, there's these candidates that pop up, and if we get 50, we can recruit them. This girl is actually a legendary character. She's the first legendary that I've ever seen in these candidates. She She's got really good traits. Her only negative is Relentless, minus 25% fatigue resist, but Modest, minus 15% retinue upkeep, so her troops are cheaper, and reduces penalty from desire for higher office, so I don't have to promote her if I don't want. And she has Fulfilled, plus 10 satisfaction, even more of a reason why I don't have to promote her, as she will be happy with not being promoted. So with Tenacity of Steel, the longer she fights, the stronger she gets. We can also make her do this assignment, Supervised Construction, minus 10% construction cost, minus one construction time, and minus 25% building upkeep. 
that's really good for Chang'an because we're going to be building buildings, I think, next turn. We'll also have Jiakong to stimulate markets for some more income next turn. And I would rather have Yang Hong be the administrator because he gives 10% more income from all sources and cheaper construction costs. But I think we're going to have food problems, so we're going to make Chang Zhu the administrator for now. This is going to give five more food production, plus two public order, which is also good, 2k pop growth, and minus 5% construction costs. We are still losing 11.25 per turn, and so we're going to let Lu Bu heal up this next turn, but then we're going to make Yan Shu take out this Jade Mine by himself, and hopefully he doesn't run into any... There's a Dongmin General, but he's actually really weak. We have 2,000, they have 1,200. What if we delegate? We lose 653 and kill both their generals. I don't know if that's a great outcome. But yeah, this has been really rough. Like, we weren't able to break into this capture point. We've just been getting shredded by their towers nonstop. I think I'm definitely going to take the delegated out from here. So we took the Jade Mine with our secondary army. And if we had taken it with Lubu's army, I'm pretty sure we could have done that with losing maybe like 200 units. The good news is the army will replenish. And we're finally able to pick up Regional Levy, which gives plus 10% more replenishment. At first, I thought this reform just makes you replenish troops 10% quicker, but that is absolutely not the case. Without the reform, our troops regenerate 11% of their HP per turn, assuming they are in friendly territory. And here it's going to take six turns until we replenish every single one of our troops to full HP. The reform actually provides a flat bonus to replenish rate and makes it so our troops replenish an extra 10% of their total HP per turn. So now our troops replenish 21% of their HP per turn. If a troop is completely wounded at zero HP, it's only going to take five turns now to replenish to full versus 10. This is definitely a reform that I can see myself rushing pretty much no matter what, assuming we are going for early combat. And this is going to allow me to fight a lot more often. So after picking up the Jade Mine, we're almost running at a surplus. We're only losing 306 per turn, so that's not bad. And Dongmin has a Silk Trader that's pretty close by. He does have an army that's kind of camping around Chang'an. So we're gonna pull Yuan Shu back towards Chang'an, and he's gonna defend the city while Lu Bu camps on the border for one more turn to heal up. Dongmin wants us to pay him nearly 9k for a peace agreement when his strength now is much inferior to ours. Good luck on that one, buddy. You reject our generosity? Wang Kuang is now attacking our trade port with a thousand units and we have 1300. The trade port is actually not our capital anymore and it automatically went over to Chang'an. So if we lose this, it's not like we lose the emperor or anything. It's not really a big deal, but I think we actually could potentially win this. We have more units than them and we have three groups of archers that are really solid. So they're just trying to jam into this capture point. And the strat is I kind of spread out the archers a bit. Um, I noticed that if they were too clumped that they weren't really firing as much. And like for example, this is actually good. Their mounted lancers are going for this archer group, which means that these towers can actually hit them. I baited these mounted lancers over this way towards these towers, which are absolutely just shredding them. The enemy general falls! And we actually already got a kill in the general. One thing I also did is I made sure that my towers are focusing their generals. Regular archers can't really hit them, or they don't do much damage to them. Wing Kuang is actually not running, which is great. Han Hao is about to run. He's pretty low HP. And this general looks like he's running. Another unit running. Perfect. And they're all running at the same exact time. I did this battle a few times and this was by far the most favorable outcome. The main two things I did was this archer group baiting those cavalry over to these towers and the ones to the right of them. And I also spread these archers out a bit. I think it's much better to spread them out versus having them clump up with the infantry. If they're too close, I just don't think they can fire. I'm not sure if that's the case. And let's Victory see, Wang Kuang is actually rest. dead. And we captured Han Hao, who is weak, unfortunately. He's not the best, like his traits are really not that good, but we will employ him mainly because we don't have any of these green nobles at the court and the green ones can do an assignment that boosts food production, which we'll do next turn because we have to recall Li Ju. Dongmin has his silk trader up here, which Lu Bu's going for currently. And then he has some farmland down here. And so I think we're gonna split up Lu Bu and Yan Shu for now. And we're gonna have Yuan Shu go over for this farmland by himself. The reason being is Chang'an's garrison is actually pretty large. It has three spearmen, one cavalry and three archers as well as from this military building it gets three extra saber infantry two lance cavalry and two more archers on top of the fact that the current administrator at Chang'an is Chang Zhu and since Chang Zhu is not currently in our army his entire force of three archers two saber militia and one g militia 
all go into Changon's garrison as well. And so Changon's garrison is absolutely huge. I'm pretty sure that it can hold out even against like a fully stacked army. The only issue is I don't know it's over here towards this farmland. Yuan Shu's army could get ambushed, but that is a risk I'm willing to take and he's going to head out. And Lu Bu's army is almost healed up completely to full. There's a yellow turban rebellion near this silk trader and we're just going to take this guy out really quick. We did capture him and he's actually got decent traits. But he won't join us, so we must execute him. We can give his follower over to Guo Si though, and so his infantry now have the formations. And does Lubu have the range to take out this silk trader this turn with a Dongmin general inside of it? Cut them down. He actually does. Only one general here with an 87% capture rate. The silk trader layout is extremely easy. Each side you attack from has only got two towers. They do have a very wounded trebuchet and so we're going to start way back here and we're going to maneuver all the way around to the other side and I don't know if the trebuchet can actually move. It looks like they actually did adjust their trebuchet positioning but it doesn't have flaming rounds so it's not doing that much damage. We were hidden up to this point so I was thinking that once we popped out they would adjust but we're burning down their buildings and they're still not adjusting their positioning. So we might just be able to charge in here and take their main capture point without them really being able to adjust to it. They're finally moving their archers over and we're gonna use circle, which gives more range block chance. Spear guards currently have a 70% chance to block range attacks. And so their archers should burn themselves out of arrows by attacking our spear guards. We lost a lot there, 748. Probably a bit more than we should have, but it's all right. We'll take that outcome. The silk trader gives us an extra 175 silk income and 40% more income from silk. It also unlocks silk, which I believe we need for a building. After capturing that, we're now gaining 200 per turn. So we're finally at a surplus. Dongmin does have a general at Anding's farmland, and I think Yanshu can take him, but I don't know how many units are at the farmland itself. I'm thinking the safer play is to have Yuan Shu meet up with Lu Bu at the city of Anding and we'll just have them both take that together. Zhang Jing has declared war on us. She's rank 8 and her allied strength compared to ours is superior. Does that mean she's gonna have friends that are gonna attack us as well? And yeah it does. Ma Tang has now declared war on us though he is rank 33 and his strength compared to ours is negligible. We're currently at war with seven factions. There were an extra two that declared war a few turns back, but they haven't shown any signs of wanting to attack us yet, so I didn't think it worth mentioning. The reason why they're all declaring war on us is mainly due to the fact that we're the prime minister of the Han Empire. It gives us negative 20 diplomatic relations with all factions. Well, we did make it to the city of Anding with two pretty much full armies, and there is a yellow turban army right outside of it who are not affiliated with the city, so if we attack them like the city will not help out. We'll see if we can take them out and siege the city this turn. I'm not really sure how the circle formation manages to block arrows better as these guys in the back are not even facing their shields towards the arrows. So none of the yellow turbans will join us as they are the yellow turban rebellion and I think they just hate everyone. We'll just release him for 100 because he doesn't have any items. They also do attack everyone so by leaving that general alive I'm not doing my enemies any favors. All right, well, we did the thing again where we spawned the main army on the other side, ran all the way around. It wasn't really worth it because they don't have any trebuchets. So it was like a full 30 minutes of battle time for absolutely no reason. All right, we finally took it out and it only has 99K population. But if we do loot it, the settlement level will be reduced and we only get 2k for doing that. Sacking the entire city only gives us 3.3k and that's definitely not worth it. Just because I'm pretty sure the cost to upgrade to a city is more than even 3k. So we're just going to occupy. We do still have to repair the buildings but it only costs 84, 79, 0 for this one and 200. I believe if we sacked it, it would cost way more to repair. Anding also does have a tool maker as well, which is great because we need tools for this building, farm tools distribution. It's supposed to be giving us 100% more food production and 35% more income from peasantry. But since we don't have tools, it's only giving us 33% food production and 5% income from peasantry. This dude Yuan Chun is kind of scaring me here as he's heading over towards Chang'an and he's got a pretty fat army. This yellow turban army actually picked up two more generals as well and one of them has an item that we would like tax collector ideally we take him out like this turn if he doesn't end up running yanshu still has full movement points he's gotta run right nope he's not gonna run did we not capture any of them i am not without mercy well that is just simply unlucky can we attack him again With honor. oh we can 
They only have their generals currently up. I wonder what happens if we delegate this. We only captured one of them yet again, and I'm pretty sure there was a 60% chance for the other ones. So that was what, out of six 60% attempts, we only got one successful. That is not the best luck. The question is, will Yuan Shen try to take out our capital against arguably bad odds for him? I think. Oh, it looks like he's going for it. Or maybe not. He might just be going for our Silk Trader. Another person declared war against us. Kong Rong is also declaring war against us, and that dude's actually pretty strong, I think. Never mind, he's ranked 30. Their allied strength compared to ours is overwhelming, though. Liu Biu joined this girl's coalition. That means he's going to attack us, too, I think. If Dongmin does take out our Silk Trader, I think that would be fairly annoying, as we would lose that 245 income. I think we're just going to have Liu Bu head back and try to cut him off, because... He's got to be going for our Silk Trader. Like, there's nothing else over here for him to go for. And Lubu actually made it quite a ways. Like, he is really close to this guy. If we do engage him in battle, like, we 100% will win this. The dude's not even at full HP, and it's freaking Lubu. So, we'll just see what he does. And we'll keep pressing on with Yuan Shu towards this Toolmaker. Yuan Shu's siege is not very good. Like, we don't have any fire arrows. And so, we're just going to starve them out, hoping that they do just decide to attack us because. Each turn, they will be losing units quite a bit, actually. So we'll just see what they do. And yeah, just as I thought, they decided not to take any attrition and they immediately attacked us. We won't be fighting into their towers, though, so we can definitely take them out with our relatively poor sieging composition. This army is actually so scuffed, like we have spearmen in a commander's retinue, which really doesn't give them any benefits at all. We have a spearman in a strategist retinue and a Saber Militia in a Strategist Retinue. The only thing it really has going for us is Yang Hong's Retinue has Shield Wall. And it looks like that is it. The hill really did prove to be pretty nice there. And we only lost 279. That was definitely much better than how many we would have lost if we attacked like into their towers, for example. Well, hi, Bi Jiang. I've never seen you before, but uh, apparently you're going to declare war on us. Liu Bao declared war on us. Oh my god. Yi Jian Liting requested Han Fu now to join their war against the Han Empire and me, which now brings the grand total of factions we are at war with to 13. Liu Biu is also rank 8, so that is a bit spooky. First, we'll finish off this toolmaker. They have a 238 garrison and... We'll just delegate this. I'm pretty sure we're going to lose like max 100. Yeah, 79. That's not bad. We will occupy it. And now we do have tools. So farm tool distribution is now giving us the full benefit at Shangon. Next, we're going to try to take out Yan Shin. He's probably going to run, but I think we can chase him down. And actually, he retreated close to our Silk Trader. So they can help us in this battle. That was not a smart move for him. We now have 3k units in this battle and... Above an 84% chance to capture all their generals. Our reinforcements are actually coming from the opposite side. And we can't get over there. I think the best play we can do here is pretty much just sacrifice this garrison. These archers are sitting in... The enemy unit, please! What coward! Because if the garrison takes damage, it will heal up over time. As will the army, but we want to keep pressing on with the main army. We killed one of their generals and captured two of them. Yuan Chun has a minus 15% retinue upkeep buff as well. Oh, he's modest. Yeah, that's a really good trait. His other traits are also really decent. Creative gives plus 12 expertise. That is quite a lot. We will definitely employ him. This girl, on the other hand, is really not that good. She wants a promotion really bad. She gives minus two satisfaction for the army. Fiery's not terrible, I guess, but it's not really good for a strategist. I think we'll just execute her and take her tunic of divination. Liu Bi requested Lu Bi join their war. Plus one we're at war with. Liu Bi is rank number two. He is not someone we want to be at war with. In other news, Zhang Jiang is heading towards, I believe, this trade port or the Han city of Hidong. So I'm pretty sure we're about to lose that, which is not really a big deal. Again, it's getting no food, so it is currently not growing, and it's about to spawn a rebellion. It's only giving us 187 per turn, so we lose it. Not a big deal. But Liu Biu is actually heading over here. I'm thinking he's going to be heading towards Chang'an with his main army. Kai Mao now declared war on us. Bringing our total to 15 factions we're at war with. Alright, here's where we find out if taking this Onding farmland is going to fix their food problem. They have 841 units. I think we'll just do the battle because Onding really needs food badly. It's also a farmland too, so I'm not thinking they have any towers or anything. Yeah, we're literally in the middle of a farm. Can we actually kill their farmers? We can't actually attack their farmers. Maybe if we had fire arrows, we could like burn their little huts. Not that we would want to, but they literally have no towers. Let's drop a shield wall and tank some of their arrows as they have 
four groups of archers. We only lost 184 and we'll occupy it. Dongmin is actually destroyed. That was their last territory. And now we do have a grain farm. I'm not sure if that's gonna be enough. It hasn't kicked in yet, I don't think. Zhang Jane's taking out our trade port. If I fight this, she will take more casualties, but I think she's eventually just gonna replenish back to full anyways. So we're just gonna delegate. If I did fight it, it would have maybe slowed her down for like one or two turns, but there was absolutely no chance I could have won that. I may very well regret doing this, but if I pull this off correctly, I'm gonna be saving us a lot of money here. So there's two things we're gonna do this turn. One is we're gonna move Zuozi Zulin over to Onding and have her do this assignment, supervise construction, minus 10% construction cost and minus one construction time. And then I'm going to make a bit riskier of a play, which is that I'm going to fire Chang Zhu for a couple turns from being the administrator at Chang'an. He is really not going to like this. It brings him down to 19 satisfaction. We also lose his garrison at Chang'an, which is pretty okay for now because it looks like Liu Bao is not going for us. And we do have Lu Bu still over here, so we should be okay for a few turns. Since our public order in Hanzong is so bad, it spawned a rebellion. But this guy does have this Jade Sculptor, which is an exceptional follower. It's the second best tier. So if we take him out with Lu Bu, who because Zhang Liao is in his army, we have patience plus 25% chance of capturing enemy officers post battle when present we should have a really good chance of capturing this guy and we should be able to kill him for that item 87 percent chance there's no way we don't capture him here we actually did not capture him 13 percent chance okay screw that i'm gonna try delegating and we actually killed him this time okay we can't be having that let's try to fight it again hopefully we can get like a different outcome if we do fight it again we did not kill him did we capture him Okay, we did. Sweet. And we'll execute him for this awesome Jade Sculptor. We're going to point Zhang Liao as the administrator for Onding. And he gives minus 28% construction cost. And we're not going to build anything yet because we're still waiting for Zuozi Zulan to finish preparing for her assignment. Hang Zong spawned another rebellion literally the next turn due to their horrible public order. And yet again, we have another exceptional follower. These yellow turban rebellions are just feeding us at this point. 77% chance and they only have 223. What happens if we delegate? We kill him. Nope. I don't think I've complained about a single mechanic thus far, but that is one that I don't really understand. Like if we kill a general and take out his army completely, how does he not drop his item? Like I would understand if say we kill a general and there's still like another general up and that general gets away, it would make sense. Like maybe he could have picked up the item or something. But like say this guy charges in 1v2000, gets killed. How does he not drop his item? Like it just doesn't make sense. Oh my God, 77% chance we didn't capture him. It's a follower. So one could argue that like the follower didn't actually join the battle and they escaped in some way, but the follower behaves the same way as items items also will not drop if you kill the general actually what we could do is just ransom and then i think we can chase him down this turn hopefully yeah we can and it again has a 77 percent chance to capture come on delegated battle please help me out here it's gonna kill him though like yeah, was kill him. Down. Maybe what happens is before he dies, he ditches the item in like a forest somewhere. Well, in this case, it's a follower, not an item. But for the sake of the argument, we'll just pretend that followers are items because again, they behave in the same exact way. That doesn't really make sense because he could have ditched the item before he gets captured versus like before he dies. The Forge Master gives six expertise and six instinct. That seems like a pretty solid follower. And I'm pretty sure I just saw Zhang Liao was his rival. Yeah, death of a rival gives Zhang Liao five more satisfaction. And now we can start upgrading buildings in Anding. The farmland is significantly cheaper. I think it was like 2.5K without us having Zhang Liao as the administrator and Zuozi Zulin doing the supervised construction. If we upgrade the farmland to grain estates, it's gonna cost 2.1K, which would have been like, what, 3.5K or something? Maybe even more. It's gonna take two turns, but it's gonna give us eight food production versus six. And since we do control the emperor, another thing we can do is annex Han Empire territory at a cost. For example, this livestock farm, we can annex this for two 2000 and that means it just joins us this gives us two extra food production and we can upgrade it and after that we need to head back to Chang'an because there's currently Zhen Jiang's army here and she's been just kind of chilling here for a few turns and now there's Han Tong heading over here and Liu Bao actually turned around and he's now heading towards Chang'an we might get attacked by three people fairly soon we also don't currently have an administrator at Chang'an so it is a bit weaker I don't know if Lu Bu can hold it by himself. And here comes Liu Biu. 
Oh no. Another thing we're gonna have to do this turn is dismiss Zhang Liao from being the administrator, which I don't think is that bad because it's not gonna cost us extra money to build the grain estates. Like we already got the discount and we're gonna make Chang Zhu the administrator of Chang On once again. So now we'll have his extra six unit garrison and we'll have Lu Bu as well as Chang On's garrison and this patrol barracks's garrison versus two armies next turn i think apparently our silk trader is about to get attacked from behind by this army i'm thinking we hired this guy yuan shun it's gonna cost a lot of money but he's got a pretty fat retinue and we can give him this battle axe which will be really good on him because he has this ability flames of the phoenix which gives him 3.8k splash damage and yeah this guy can make it to the silk trader this turn mainly i think because he has this ability reach which gives him 25 percent more campaign movement range here's ma tang and i think this is his last settlement and i'm pretty sure this is his only army Absolutely not. this girl is actually legendary she's heading over to the onding livestock farm we could try to cut her off with yuan Shu's army. The question is, do we think that Lu Bu can hold on to Chang On by himself? I'm going to put faith in Lu Bu. We're going to try to cut this girl off, not let her get into the livestock farm. And it's your move now, Ma Tang. And the enemy generals, for the most part, retreated. I'm wondering if we can attack Han Tong this turn with Lu Bu. And I think the risk is worth the reward because that's one less army we have to worry about. And so we're going to go for it. And he's not running. Wait. So for some reason, I could not see this girl on the map. And they have 1500 plus 1758, which means that Lu Bu is now in a situation where he's again almost outnumbered 2 to 1. I tried to exit out, but the game auto saved here, so we have to fight this battle. However, Zhang Liao is going to come in very clutch here because he has an ability that allows us to fight night battles. You can only do this if a general has the ability, and if we do this, he now gets zero reinforcements, so we're just fighting Lu Bu against him. And his army composition is actually looking fairly weak. He's got a lot of archers. Another benefit of the night battle is the enemy loses 15 morale. So when Lubu mows into their archer line, they're going to want to run a lot quicker. Although it looks like they're actually not going to move. It looks like Lubu is going to make them start moving now. And let's see, they're not even going to move their infantry up. It's going to hurt. Oh, that one's running already. Two, two are running instantly. Wait, running, running? They're all running. Wait, the only ones that aren't running are the generals, actually. We need to get Zhang Liao over here, and he can use Roar on the generals, and I bet they'll run too. We brought some archers forward, and they're using flaming arrows on them. Hopefully, we'll make these infantry perma route this time. There goes that general. And then there's literally one left, I think. Oh, he just got skewered hard by Lu Bu. I don't want to kill him, because he's got a really nice chess piece. Actually, no, he has Unbreakable. He doesn't suffer any morale loss, and he'll never rout. So what does that mean? We have to kill him? I mean, the dude's so low. Like, we're just going to have Lubu skewer him. Yeah, there he goes. That battle was absolutely wild, though. I've never had morale work so much in my favor. We killed this guy. And we captured this girl. She has no item. That really sucks, because this guy was absolutely loaded with items. This girl's actually a really good strategist. She's got quiet, so we don't have to promote her. She has more cunning, and enigmatic gives her more cunning. We'll definitely employ her. From the ashes of the battlefield, a horse is brought before you. It belonged to the enemy general, and he was seen to be killed by an unfortunate accident whilst riding it. 80 speed on this horse. What? And 50% chance to evade capture post-battle. Let's just give it away. Like, there's literally no negatives from keeping it, and giving it away does nothing. One of the advisors says that it's cursed. A wondrous horse indeed. Who cares about superstition? I don't think the horse belonged to the general we killed. We may have just picked that up because of Guosi's superstitious trait. And the speed is actually 10 speed faster than Lubu's horse. It doesn't get all the charge bonus and it has less mass. But I think it still could be good on this guy. Especially because he has this really nice weapon. We do have a little bit of movement left. And let's see if we can attack Zhang Jiang this turn. Leave none alive. Ooh, we actually can. And we can again fight a night battle. I'm looking at their morale and I'm already seeing their units have like 15, 13, 17. Meanwhile, our units have like 75 morale, 82. Archers have 73. These guys are also standing on bushes, which I think catch on fire. And if they do catch on fire, that will burn them over time. Oh yeah, this one's already blinking. Like his morale is terrible. And yeah, he's standing in fire. It's giving them damage and they're losing morale. Yep, it already ran. Oh man, Lubu's taking a lot of damage from this girl. She freaking hurts. She's got these red sisters that I think just shred. Yeah, they got a lot of armor piercing damage. Zhang Liao's been defeated. Oh no, Lubu enraged. I don't think he actually dies though. I'm pretty sure he has an ability that will prevent him from getting killed. Okay, Lubu's actually winning the battle against this girl now. Um, kinda. Holy crap, you just took a lot of damage there. I can't really afford- oh, there, there she goes. She's running. So if we look at the battlefield, a lot of them did route, but 
Yeah, okay, we won. It took quite a while. This girl was just such a beast. Like, she has this move, Binding Fury, which makes her do a bunch of splash damage, and her weapons are insane. Okay, yeah, he's not dead. Phew. And we didn't capture any of their generals, unfortunately. And now we're going to try to have Lubu attack Zhang Jiang. He is going over a river, though, and I believe that does slow his movement. But we'll just see if we can get there this turn. Okay, never mind, we can't. Last turn, he got a bit closer to Lubu and set up this settlement. If history has shown us anything, though, it's that defending in these settlements is not going to be really any kind of strategic advantage for them. We'll hope he doesn't try to retreat, though. Cut them down. He does. If we can run him down and we defeat him, since he did already retreat, I don't think his generals can get away. Kill them all. Yep, his army is destroyed if it loses. Oh, their spotting ability is horrible. We're still hidden, and we're actually, like, really close to them. It's because we're fighting a night battle. Lubu's getting that juicy archer line. And it's what fleeing at full cowards. HP almost. Oh yeah, a lot of them are fleeing. The time has come. Let's do a roar. That's going to make even more of them flee. They're not going to like that at all. Yep, yep, they're all running. Like a lot of their infantry. Anyways, we're just going to release him for 400. He's not that good. And though we didn't fully kill Kong Rong, his generals are going all the way back to his main city, which I think is really far away. We're currently here. This is our capital. And Kong Rong's capital is all the way over here. That dude went a long way to accomplish absolutely nothing. Chang'an is not at risk to be attacked, so I think we're good to take out this trade port. We're not going to play this slow. We're just having Lubu charge in and just... He's going to use this. Oh my god. I think he just demolished two infantry almost instantly. Wow, that was quick. That was in less than five minutes of battle time. Wait, that's actually hilarious. So whoever took it upgraded it from a coastal trading port to a coastal trading village. And now it's generating us extra money. And it has a fatter garrison. Was that the bandit girl? I think it was. And Lubu is actually level eight now. So we can do Smoldering Fury, which makes it so the longer Lubu is in combat, the more damage he gets. And it increases exponentially. I think it takes phase one, 15 seconds of combat to activate. But then phase two only takes 10 seconds. Then phase three, six. Then phase Phase 4 3. She is really wounded. I think she ran out of military supplies from being in our territory for so long. And so next turn, I'm pretty sure she's done for. Like, she's really got nowhere to run. These horse pastures should have a garrison, but I don't even know if there's towers there. We have a 60% chance of capturing this girl, which would be really cool because she is legendary. What's the delegate outcome looking like? We get her in the delegate outcome. Hey, easy clap there. And her traits are all decent. Nothing like too amazing, but nothing bad. And Ma Tang is completely destroyed. Having the horse pastures gives minus 4% upkeep for cavalry units and minus 14% recruitment cost for cavalry units faction wide. So that is actually pretty useful. Hello, is anyone still here? Did anyone get to this point of the video? If you did, then good freaking job, dude, because you probably beat out like 99% of the people that actually watch this. I feel like the video definitely did drag on, but if you did like it and you want see me conquer the rest of the map then drop a like in the next video we're gonna get revenge on this bandit girl and i'll probably just end up conquering the entire map if i can just because i feel like i am starting to snowball and i'm getting really strong also we'll be testing out lubu's smoldering fury ability and on a side note when this video goes live i'm gonna be streaming it's not gonna be this game it's not gonna be league it's actually made a really stupid stream idea and i'm not sure if i'm even gonna make it into a video and i think i'll actually probably go live like an hour after i drop this video i'll leave a link to the stream in the comments for all 10 of you guys that want to check it out and yeah Thank you for watching. I will see you in the next video.